Welcome to Mirror Domains Movie News, your place for entertainment headlines. And this is a uh, show for movie fans. <laughs> I want to talk about the trending movie news headlines of the day, guys. John Wick Chapter 4 is dropping today, and uh, most people are going to go out and see it, including myself. That's why I'm starting a little bit early today. That's why you don't see a sidebar here. That's why, uh, well, it's going to be a bit of a shorter show because I'm going to go out and see it in precisely one hour. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, we'll try to get through some of the stories. Let's just get into it by talking about that John Wick story that uh, opens up. Well, it opened up last night, so <clears throat> we got some uh, early numbers rolling in, and it's around like 8 million it made in its uh, Thursday night previews, which is good. <clears throat> Keanu Reeves returns to titular hero in hugely popular action franchise. Oh, forgive me, I'm still uh, not feeling 100%. <clears throat> But, you know, I'm getting there, guys. I'm getting there. Um, I'm hyped for this. Uh, the one thing that I have a reservation on is the runtime. It's like two hours and 50 minutes or something, which is a huge beef in my world because I don't believe you don't need that long to tell a good quality story. Um, I don't see how it benefits the studio to make movies that long. Because uh, I'm one of those people where it's kind of like, it's, it's not a YouTube page. It's not a Facebook page. It's uh, you know, like meaning that if the longer you get somebody to watch your product, the better it is. It's not like that, right? Uh, these are movies. So the longer that you have, that means the higher budget that goes. That goes. Um, anyway, I'm digressing. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean. Um I, and I'm not one of those people that say, well, if it's longer, it's better. Like, I, I, I hate, if you want to get under my skin, <laughs> you want to uh, get me triggered, uh, I'll just watch one of those videos where it's like, oh, the show was only 30 minutes. It should be an hour. And if it was an hour, then it was good. It's like, I, like people equate length with quality. And it's, it's just like, that, that's a way to get me triggered. Uh, anyway, uh, it's like... Uh, anyway, um, that's my only reservation about John Wick. Uh, chapter 4 is the length, and I hope I don't feel it. Uh, so I'm going to see it at 12. I'll be out by 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Eesh. Yeah, that's that, see, that's that's what I'm talking about, guys. We, we just don't have time for this kind of stuff anymore. But anyway, because uh, theoretically, that's two movies you could have been watching. Or doing something else. Anyway, 96%. By the uh, critics, 96 by the audience. Enough of my belly aching over the runtime. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to go see this and I'm going to be totally blown away because I love the cast in this. Of course, you know, Keanu Reeves is awesome. Uh, Bill Skarsgård, I hear good things. Donnie Yen is the bad guy, uh, like the, the muscle. So I'm curious to see how this all unfolds. And then I saw a clip with, like, was it Scott Atkins? This is Scott Atkins, right? in the fat suit or whatever um that's cool uh yeah they released like a tv spot of him talking i'm very curious to see how that unfolds right is that is that what i got right here and of course you've got some other uh henchmen there uh scars guard with that guy uh and this will be of course the last film that i'll probably see with lance reddick so it'll be kind of a sweet goodbye i suppose uh yeah, so for the most part, people are liking it. Uh, an exhilarating thrill ride. Rolling Stone says, uh, the almost blank slate of idea protagonist is partially why the role is ideal for Keanu Reeves' minimal expressiveness. Even when he's kicking maximum ass, take away the sound and the fury, and you still have momentum thanks to him. Yeah, it's Keanu. Keanu's why we're going to go see this. Three hours, fine. Uh, yeah, Chris Schober. Uh, whoops, I didn't put up the uh, chat. Uh, all right. I thought I did put up the chat. I forgot there. Yeah. Uh, John Wick Chapter Four is three hours. So, uh, as I said, like who has three hours in their day? These like around this time to go see a movie. <clears throat> it's just. And we're going to talk about Guardians of the Galaxy too. That's it's, it's it's pushing this this limit too. It's like length doesn't necessarily always mean quality, guys. Like I want to drive that home. 
and nobody else is talking about it. It's like, oh, it's good. It's three hours long. <laughs> it's like, no. <sighs> Jesus. You know, it's just, don't you have other things that you want to do in the day too, guys? <laughs> don't you have other things that you like to do? Don't you want to choose some, uh, or, you know, uh, play some video games or look at your phone but for three hours? <laughs> I said I would stop talking about it. I'm not, I don't seem to be stopping to talking about it. But guys, it is going to be huge. It, as I said, it's made eight million on its Thursday night previews. It's tracking to be like uh, what did the THR say there? Uh, it's tracking to have the huge opening of sixty-five to seventy million. That's domestically. So worldwide, it's already tracking better. So easily, I think it's going to make a hundred million, one hundred twenty million worldwide. Uh, this weekend uh, we go over to the box office from last weekend Shazam only made 30 million last week and that's going to get chopped in half if not by 60 percent John Wick is going to blow that out of the water I expect everything there to get shifted down one because I don't think anything else big is opening up this weekend in limited release you got Children of the Corn but that's really limited release because that's also going to be out on some streaming services. So, uh, yeah, we'll take a look at that. Uh, John Wick, it's going to it's gonna blow it, everything out of the water there. So don't worry about that. There was another article just keeping on with John Wick here. How uh, ballerina's fight sequences will differ from John Wick, John Wick's. Yeah, because we know that Anna de Armas is going to be in John Wick. So... Uh, or there's going to be a spinoff called Ballerina with her. And uh, I'm expecting it to be a little bit more... Well, actually, I, I would expect it to be the same. Why wouldn't it be the same? She's an assassin like he is, right? So he, she's probably... Yeah, she's got the Ballerina training. You don't know what exactly kind of training John Wick had other than he was just really good at killing people, right? Uh, maybe it'll be a little bit more artistic. character in ballerina what you're seeing is a younger more rookie uh assassin okay so she's younger uh she's going to make mistakes and she's going to learn okay so she'll have a, like a learning curve to her to her fighting style i'm still curious about this and i hope they reference it a little bit because ballerina is supposed to take place between john wick three and four from what i understand so i'll be keeping my eye out when i go see that in just over an hour from now uh, for sure. <clears throat> you know, just little Easter eggs and stuff like that. All right. Chris Schober says, so the Candyman killer actor is not going to be the focus of, oh, for John Wick 4. Uh, John, Candyman what? killer actor? Uh, what is he supposed to be in uh john wick um or uh, i'm gonna pull up john wick's imdb here uh who are you talking about brand not yeah yeah domingo coleman domingo is that who you're thinking he's supposed to be in it is he in john wick four i don't know God, IMDb is so slow loading up the pages. I need a new PC is what I need. Fear the Walking Dead. Uh, no, I don't see him there. Let's go to John Wick. Look at the cast. Uh... Keanu Reeves, see if I recognize him. Looking forward to seeing what Clancy Brown does in this. The Kurgan. Uh, and I hear good things about Bill Skarsgård. Donnie Yen. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to see those fight scenes. Hiroyuki Sonata. Scorpion. Yeah, he's going to be in this too. 
I don't see the guy from uh, Candyman here. Shamir Anderson, maybe? Is that who you're thinking of? No, I don't think he was in Candyman. I don't even know who that this guy is. Was he in Candyman? Doesn't look like it. Oh, oh well. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I can't wait to see what they are up to. If there's up their sleeves for John Wick Chapter Five after Four. We'll have to see. I, I'm sure that it's going to make enough money that I think they said they were going to make a five regardless. But I think five was all they had plans for. I mean, the thing is, is that when you make five movies, unless you're going to totally revamp it like they did with the Fast and Furious franchise, like transform it into like a different genre. John Wick has the danger of turning into uh, what happened to the Die Hard franchise, where they just tried to keep on milking the same kind of. Oh, now he's got to run from these bad guys. Now he's got to run from these other bad guys. Well, it's the same kind of situation. He's just got to run away from bad guys over in Russia this time. It's kind of like you can only do that so many times and have it kind of like be entertaining. It's right. And it's like it'll have to reinvent itself somehow. And I'm hoping there's Easter eggs of that or plantings of that within this fourth film. Uh, this one's supposed to be a lot more global, so we'll have to see. All right, let's take a look at what's opening up this weekend. Because as I said, I'm I'm going to go see John Wick here. In uh, what else is opening up this weekend? John Wick Chapter Four. I'm seeing it at the twelve fifteen show here in two D. I'm not seeing it in three D. Thank thank God they're not putting it in three D. Uh, Shazam tried to pull that trick last week, and I was like, oh, who else did? Oh, Sh Scream did that recently too. It's like, see, come see it in three D. No thanks. Uh, anyway. I could go see it in the extra theater, but all all the primetime shows are like uh, later on in the day. So I'm going to see it at the 1215. It, it shouldn't be that many people in there. Let's just take a look and see what the seating chart is. Oh, okay, there are some people in there. The X's uh, on a Friday afternoon, but I, at least I won't be in with the kid, right? <laughs> like the teenagers who don't skip school. Anyway, uh, Shazam, <laughs> 65, Champions, yeah, I saw Champions, uh, Mummies, no, don't have no interest in that, Doesn't Boots, yeah, uh, so Shazam, or sorry, <laughs> John Wick is seemingly like it's the only big one opening up this weekend, I, I, I thought, I was hoping, keeping my fingers crossed, oh, Brother's still playing there, I was hoping that I would be able to see uh, that Children of the Corn, where the Wind Blows, Cantonese film. Okay, Cantonese. Uh, maybe if I go to a different town, I can get some more options. Guelph usually has got some other options there. Let's take a look and see what else is playing here. Uh, all these Lost Voices documentary. Roman Holiday, a good person. <gasps> oh, God. They're playing a good person. Damn, that's opening up this week. That's not Florence Pugh, uh, Morgan Freeman movie. Six fifty. See, uh, uh, why is nowhere in the Tri City area where I live is playing that? God, why? Ah, that that bums me out, man. Uh, I wanted to see this movie too, because uh, the trailers look good. Uh, Daniel is brought together with Allison, uh, the once thriving young woman with a bright future who is involved in an unimaginable tragedy that took his daughter's life. As a grief-stricken, Daniel navigates raising his teenage granddaughter and Allison seeks redemption. They discover that friendship forgiveness can both flourish in, the, in unlikely places. Yeah. Uh, maybe Kitchener playing it? Hopefully they are. Uh, this is my long, long ball chance. Zigwato. Zigato? Zigwato? I think we saw that last week, right? Uh, good person. Oh, can you say they are playing it there? Damn. Oh, man. So maybe I'll go down there. To oh, that means. Ah, the good person. Yeah, I'm going to have to go check that out this weekend. Maybe tomorrow or Sunday I'll go see it. 
Yeah. That's what else is opening up this weekend. I do want to see the good person for sure. Uh, yeah. In theaters March 31st. Oh, so it's going to be water release? Maybe it's next week? So is that like a, a, a early screening of it maybe? Um, I still want to see it. Florence Pugh, great actress. All right, let's talk about some more run long time, <laughs> run times, long run times with Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Uh, run time is one of the longest, MCU's longest. Oof, oof. Well, at least we know that for at least this movie, it's going to be the last time that we're going to see these characters all together, right? And uh, it's going to be like the vo voyage there, happy, happy sales or whatever they call it two hours and 29 minutes okay so that's not that long end game was longer right uh but it's getting up there and again as i said i don't understand why productions do this because as i it increases the value of how much you're spending on the project it does because you're setting up all these extra scenes that you got to account for and do you really need that to tell your story of your core story right So we'll have to see. Uh, two hours and 29 minutes. Is that what it says on the IMDb here? I don't know. All right. Yeah. May, May 5th. So that's still over a month away. Uh, two hours and 29 minutes. Yeah, I'm looking. I, I'm guessing that at least one of them will die in this. Uh, I want to see what Will Poulter does here with Adam Warlock. Two hours and 29 minutes. Maria Bakalova is playing the dog. That's cool. Uh, yeah. So looking forward to that. Uh, what's next? Paramount to remake Hitchcock's Vertigo, Robert Downey Jr. eyes lead role. Now, I'll be brutally honest here with you guys. I've never seen uh, Hitchcock's Vertigo. Because uh, this one was one where it was shot in black and white and they post-converted it, right? Is that is that what it happened? No? Yes? Uh, there's just something about the color palette that just throws me off. A, a lot of those older movies, too. I just, I find them hard to get into because it's very, it's very obvious that it was a, production <laughs> uh the acting is a certain way um and i don't like that <laughs> uh and i know it's a travesty in 1958 it's supposed to be like you're supposed to be a big movie guy james and you haven't watched these big classics well that's the thing with classics too right as i said it's it's got like a stigma on it but it's going to be from the creator stephen knight peaky blinders set to write the script hot on the heels of his commitment to an untitled Star Wars movie. Oh yeah, that came up this week too. We'll talk about that in just a moment. So Stephen Knight is going to write a uh, remake for Vertigo. Like, I mean, how, what, and again, what are you rewriting? You have Vertigo that is very well received by m most movie fans out there. You, you're just going to be like, what, adapting it to future, like, well, adapting it to our present time? Okay. Uh... I, uh, I don't know. Robert Downey Jr., though, I guess he needs work. No, no he doesn't need work. What the heck is he doing? <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm being a bit of a curmudgeon today, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fine. Uh, <laughs> Paramount Pictures has previously acquired the remake of the Hitchcock Vertigo uh, starring Vehicle. Vehicle. See, that's a... I don't know if I like that term anymore. It's a vehicle for Robert Downey Jr. It's like, uh, okay, well, that's kind of works. Maybe what? It's just kind of like, <clears throat> not everything has to get updated for our future or like our time. Uh -huh. yeah, that's no, James. That's not the right way to say it. It's like. Hmm. Because they tried remaking Psycho shot for shot. 
and it just didn't resonate with the fans. It was actually panned. So uh, Vertigo, <sighs> you guys, it's, it's just kind of like, meh, okay, you do whatever you're going to do. The audience for that is going to be small. So I wouldn't expect, if if, they, if Vertigo comes out and says that it's got like a budget of like a hundred million dollars, I'll be like, you guys are insane. You're, you're crazy. You're not, you, you're just throwing your money away. Um, yeah. Halle Bailey says that the Little Mermaid will see Ariel leave the ocean for more than a boy. And this one I got thoughts on too. Uh, because the original cartoon, I guess... She, I never saw the original cartoon, but I guess she, and we saw it in the trailers that uh, she sees a boy and she becomes infatuated with him or enamored and wants to go meet him. That's what, hey, out of all of our instincts as a human, that's what we are tending to, we see somebody that we like and we're like, I like that person. I don't know why. I just want to be with that person. I don't why, I don't know why that's a negative thing for like people trying to make movies these days. Um, and it's like you can't just be about that because that's what what exactly what is that below human standards <laughs> uh does that make you less of a human if you if you say i like that person i want to watch a movie about the romance between them is that what why why is that wrong uh why does she need to leave the ocean for more than just a boy and it it, it reeks of them trying to shoehorn uh this is where I, of morality into it. I'm not going to use that woke word for this. I'm not going to use SJWBS kind of stuff for this because uh, I'm very progressive myself. And I don't mind those messages in, the, in my movies. I just, I don't need it shoved down my throat. And as long as the new version of Little Mermaid uh, stays away from shoving it down my throat, it's like, yeah, she's, well, she's a mermaid, guys. Seriously. <laughs> Why does it have to have any more subtext to it than that? Uh, it's a fantasy. Right? Uh, if all of a sudden she just stops and gets on a rock and says, no, you should aspire to more. It's like, use your brain for everything that you're doing. It's like, what? <laughs> it, it, it loses its mark, right? Uh, but anyway, let's just see what she said here. Uh I'm really excited for my version of the film because we've definitely changed that perspective of her just wanting to leave the ocean for a boy. It's way bigger than that. It's about herself, her purpose, her freedom, her life, and what she wants. Well, isn't that sort of what the first one was about, too? It's what she wants. I mean, she wants to learn about that boy. There's nothing wrong with that. We're humans. We have instincts. We have drives. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, And I guess my bottom argument, like my, like my base argument would be if it worked, if the first movie was just all about that and it worked for you, why would it not work for the generation of today? Why does the generation of today need to have all this other stuff crammed onto it? <clears throat> That's what's getting a lot of people angry out there with these other hate channels. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to see hate videos of this today. Of them saying, ooh, it's too woke, it's too... I was like, guys, I, I, I just got no time for that nonsense and that BS. So it's kind of like, uh, hopefully it doesn't get bogged down with that extracurricular messaging. That's what I say. Joker 2. Uh, oh, I guess I should have talked about that Star Wars story. Ah, we'll talk about that in just a minute. Joker 2 uh, is on fire in Joker... Or Arkham Asylum is on fire in Joker 2 set videos. Now, this this could be somewhat of a spoiler. Guys, it's just a set video. I'm not going to play it here. Uh, I guess this is Arkham Asylum. It's, I'm sure there's going to be a riot at some point and they get out. Uh, yeah, there it is there. And if I press play, you're just going to see it's starting to go up in flames. So, it's a Joker. He's not in an Arkham Asylum all the time. So, he's, he's going to get out. And we've seen in set photos of him walking around on the street or something like that. Eh, it's no big deal. Uh, it's cool to look at, sure. All right, this one I'm kind of uh, really interested in. Uh, Anne Hathaway. 
You know I like Anne Hathaway. New dinosaur movie already sounds better than Jurassic World. Huh. Well, that's a... Uh, yeah, the headline got me. Uh, but then when you start to read this article, uh, it doesn't really tell you that much. <laughs> uh, Anne Hathaway will star in a dinosaur movie of her own. Not much is known about the project. Not even its name. But there are enough details to hint at it being a thrilling and a very different dinosaur flick from anything else before. So not else is known. It's gone to Anne Hathaway. So that that automatically makes it better than Jurassic World. See, that's what I meant, kind of like a misleading title. The title got me, at least. Uh, I do like dinosaurs. I do like Anne Hathaway. As I said, uh, she's my favorite uh, Catwoman, aside from Michelle Pfeiffer. Uh, she's she had the tall thing going for her, and I like tall. <clears throat> Anne Hathaway dinosaur movie is exciting. Uh, okay, so they got a little bit of a synopsis here. The film will have an '80s setting, which makes the movie even more mysterious and fascinating. The period also sets the movie a few years before the original Jurassic Park. Well, yeah, well that has nothing to do with anything because they won't have the rights to do that, guys. So. It's not going to be tied to the to the islands or anything like that. Uh, Anne Hathaway's dinosaur movie is a great director. So you got a, an actor attached to this. You got a director from the guy who did It Follows, David Robert Mitchell. Okay. So, uh, if you watched It Follows, we're horror fans here on this channel. Uh, you know, that weird entity that follows you around when you, uh, well, Get jiggy with it with someone, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, what is his name? Let's take a look at his credits here. David Robert Mitchell. There he is, right there, guys. Uh, you don't need to see what his mug looks like. Just want to take a look at his credits here. He's his writing credits, his directing credits uh, are more important to me than writing right now. Untitled Anne Hathaway Robert Mitchell film pre production. Oh, he also did Under the Silver Lake that came and went and nobody talked about. But It Follows was a huge marker, and it's surprising that he never returned to that kind of a feel. Like, it took four years for him to get something else off the ground, and now it's taken him another five years to get this one off the ground. Uh, but he did it, it Follows with a lower budget. Anne Hathaway, as I said, in a dinosaur movie set in the 80s. Set in the 80s. Uh, yeah. Looking forward to that. Pfeiffer says, Under the Silver Lake is a 10 out of 10 for me. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne character you're talking about, Chris? Is Bowery King for John Wick Chapter 4, do you think this actor will be in Chapter 4? Probably. I don't, uh, I don't, unless somehow they kill him in this movie. Uh, which is always possible. We'll have to see him with John Wick. Uh, yeah. Well, guys. Yeah, there was only that one other Star Wars thing that dropped this week. Uh, that a lot of people will be talking about. Or they did talk about. I don't, I don't put much weight into this. I'm not going to ramble on about this. Uh, the guy from Peaky Blinders. We talked about this earlier, too. Uh, the guy that's adapting Vertigo. Um, fine. As I said, uh, uh, in somebody's comment there, uh, it was on a Christian Harloff short, I commented saying that they just, you know what they need to do? They say, well, they got a writer's room for one movie. You, you put together a writer's room for one movie. It's not hard to write a treatment for something. Like, guys, uh, I, I wrote a treatment this week for Nightmare on Elm Street, a reboot of that. And just getting my ideas out and formulating them into a story structure that makes sense. It's not hard. Now, you, I sat back at it now, and I'm like, well, is it a good movie? Is that a movie that people would go to pay to see? And then you just you just say, well, no, you scrap it, or you just or you try to retool it, right? Uh, it didn't take that long. It took me, what, two or three days to get to that stage of looking at it and saying, well, is it good or is it not? Should I flush it out? Uh, yeah. 
two or three days. It shouldn't take years for you to develop a script, which seems to be happening with these Star Wars movies and with Batman movies with Matt Reeves. It really shouldn't. Um, story structures have certain uh, tent poles in them. Like, 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 if you don't hit these marks within a story structure, you can easily the, the story falls apart, and you're just wandering around for like thirty minutes on a story thread that goes nowhere. And you're like, well, why did we do that? That's another danger of r long run times is that you'll get bogged down in exposition or subplots that don't bolster the main story it's kind of like we just spent 30 minutes over here doing this with this guy that has nothing to do with the main story <laughs> it's like what why uh again anyway i'm i don't, I don't want to it seems to be the theme of that today <laughs> but uh I, I am really in better moods today so uh hey it is what it is um i if i were in charge of Star Wars, I'd be like, okay, guys, here's what's happening. We are going to come into a room. We are going to sit down, and we are going to write down what episode 10, 11, and 12 are going to be. We're going to write them all out. We're going to write down the entire story arcs, and then we're just going to sit on it, and we're going to try to produce other stories that will lead into that and build it up into that. Uh, and, hey, if you want to go develop Knights of the Old Republic, have at it, man. Let's Let's develop that, too. Let's create a trilogy over there. And we'll sit down with all of these rules that if I'm going to go out and hire a director, he's going to be knowing that these are the rules that we have set for this story confines. You don't get to come in and say, oh, I don't like this anymore, so we'll just scrap it. It's like, like what they did with the sequel trilogy, what Ryan Johnson did, right? No, you're not going to have that kind of control over it. It's going to be like the Kevin Feige situation with MCU. It'd be like, no, these are the story confines that you have to stay in and play in this universe. Uh, you can't take our model and throw it out the window just because you feel like your name is um, who, 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 uh, Taika Waititi. No, you, we, you can't do that. Um, write your own script? Okay, fine. But here's our Bible. Here are the rules of the universe that you're going to be playing in. Um, and we have all these other stories that we're setting up for down the line that are, you're going to have to be mindful of while you create your one movie. And that's going to have to be like the number one thing that I would say to anybody, any creator that would come into that universe. And if that's just what they have to be signing up for. And you say to me, James, but who, what director would want to sign up for that? There are tons of directors that would are aching for a chance to make their mark. And that would be awesome. That would be a, an awesome way to set people up. And here's the other thing too, with, with writing Star Wars in the Star Wars universe. Um, it doesn't have, just because people as, associate Star Wars with it, it's got to be a big blockbuster. It's got to be a, a $200 million project. It's got to make a billion dollars at the box office. Otherwise, what's the point of making it? No. You know what would be really awesome to see? A Star Wars movie that costs $7 million to make. That, like, why? What could it possibly be about then? It has to have big visual effects in it. Does it? Does a Star Wars movie need to have big visual effects in it? What about if it's all about story and character? Um, in a small situation of, uh, like on Coruscant, of, yeah, like, it, there's, it, it's totally possible. Uh, I don't understand why, like, you can develop these smaller stories and, and, and experiment. That's what I would do. Experiment with, push yourself. Try to make a Star Wars movie for only $20 million. See what happens. Why can't you? Uh, use the volume, uh, do things like that. Uh, I know people are getting a little tiresome of the volume kind of uh, look, but hey, it looks better than some of the green screen stuff. Uh, and if you use it sparingly, and in, in, it can be done. I, I'm convinced that it can be done. Uh, and yeah, and as long as you're aware of that bigger idea that it can grow into, like you're working towards what your big plan for episode 10, 11, and 12 are going to be fine. Or if it doesn't touch any of those properties, then it should work. Uh, I don't understand why this is such a big problem. I would be constantly working with these writers, 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 and be like workshopping for like a whole year if you need to. Get it all set down. But right now it's kind of like, we don't, we kind of want to make a Star Wars movie. We don't know what it'll be about. 
we're going to hire this guy to make a Star Wars movie. We'll see if we like it. And if we like it, we'll green light it. But then what happens next? If somebody likes it, then you got to, that's what you got to go with. And if you have plans for something else that don't jive with that, then you just shot yourself in the foot. So it's all about preparation, planning it out. And I don't, I don't get that from Lucasfilm. I don't, I don't feel that uh, with the constant rotation of uh, writers and directors that come in. Because as a writer, like I write movies myself too, I would be totally comfortable saying, oh, there's a job up for writing a Star Wars movie, James. Okay, uh, I'll submit my pitch. Uh, oh, but I'm not allowed to use my own creative juices. Uh, I got to follow their outlines. That's fine, fine. Give me some restraints. <laughs> you know, uh, writers are artists as well. And sometimes working in those restraints make you even more creative. So that's fine. Like, I don't understand why they haven't laid down that law yet. They haven't figured out batch making of movies yet for some reason over there at Lucasfilm. Uh, the same way that MCU has, right? Chris Homer says, will you do a reaction to this upcoming Star Wars movie at the movie theater? Yeah, of course. Whenever this thing comes out, if it comes out, who knows, right? This Justin Britt Gibson. Uh, if he's doing this and now he's doing Vertigo, which one has priority? That's what I would say. Or at least that's what I would be asking. Which one of these has a priority? Uh, fish sandwich. No thanks. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but you, you guys kind of get what I'm talking about, right? Uh, so I think I'm going to go over to uh, my Twitter page here and see what is trending out there in case I missed anything. If there's any other trailer. Oh, yeah, there's that Renfield trailer. We're going to take a look at that tomorrow on the Horror Weekly Roundup. Uh, there's some other trailers out there for like the Black Demon and uh, Big Shark. <laughs> we'll watch those on the horror show because they're more horror suited. Uh, all right, let's take a look at what's trending out there. See if we missed any big headlines. You has been renewed for fifth season and final season at uh, Netflix. I never watched it. Pretty Carter. Uh, Jack Champion. We just saw him in the Scream movie. Of course, he's Spider in the uh, Avatar movies. Yellow Jacket Season 2 is now streaming. That's right. I need to sign up for Amazon Prime again. That's on Amazon Prime, right? No, no, no. That's on Crave. No, I, know I won't be signing up for Crave again. Uh, 22 bucks a month for the limited stuff. It's just, it's, it's not worth it for me. Uh... Yeah, good person. There it is. It's opening up this week. Lawrence Pugh has written and recorded two songs. So she's singing some songs for this too. Wow, what a talented actress. Uh, we need to watch Black Widow. Guys, maybe we need to watch Black Widow next week. Next week is going to be a big week too. <clears throat> Guys, uh, next Friday we'll be watching... Uh, Murder Mystery 2 here on the channel on Friday, as well as our movie news. Uh, plus, we'll be doing uh, our full review for Dungeons & Dragons. Next Friday is going to be huge, guys. Next week, we're going to be out with a normal uh, schedule. Uh, it's just to, this week, I was getting over uh, this head cold that still seems to be lingering on today. I feel like I'm getting a bit of a warm head here. Uh, but I'm going to push my limits anyway. Uh, Hayden Panettiere wants to be in White Lotus Season 3. Cool. Well, we just saw her in uh, Scream. And she was a little doubtful that she could return to acting. and But she returned in good form, I would say. Uh, so, yeah, that's good. Uh, White Lotus Season 3. She wants to be. Well, who doesn't want to be in good projects, right? Uh, what are some of your favorite cards? Title cards. Uh title cards. Well, they don't really do that anymore. I like the T2, the boom, boom kind of thing. Uh, very simple uh, title cards. Seven had a good title cards. 
Actually, I kind of like the Total Recall title cards as well, with them all streaking up. How it created kind of like a wall. Uh, exclusive new stills. Ah, uh, yes, we'll talk about this tomorrow as well. Linda Blair to reprise her role as Regan in the new Exorcist uh, movie coming up. So that's cool. That's good. I like Linda Blair. Cool that she's back working. Rachel Ziegler covers the latest issue of Glass Magazine. What did we just see Rachel Ziegler in? Oh, yeah. Shazam! Fury of the Gods. She was one of the sisters. Uh, Chris Schober says, I just heard on the Google that Ryan Johnson's Star Wars trilogy got canceled. Well, that, I'm sure that, that one got canceled and scrapped a long time ago. Again, it's because they just allow these other, these people, these creative people to come in and write movies, but they don't have a story, uh, a story Bible, a universe Bible of confines that you got to stick in. And you got to map that all out before you say, okay, now you can come in and write your project. Now you can come in and do this. This is what Jedi can and can't do. You don't get to come in and say that Jedi can now do this. No, you don't get to do that. You don't get to come in and say, oh, lightsabers change color depending on your mood. No, that's not how lightsabers work. It works like this. You, you, you see what I'm talking about? That's what they need to lock down in these kinds of writing sessions. Um, Greta Gerwig has directed Academy Award. Nominated performance. Okay. Uh, production has wrapped on Sam Taylor Johnson's Amy Winehouse pick. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, that one... I'm I want I want to see it, but Amy Winehouse is one of those. Well, she succumbed to her vices, right? Uh, depends on how they, how delicate they handle that material, right? Benedict Wong, we like him. Kalina Wong, I don't know who the bad genius. Nicole Kidman, Dakota Fanning. Uh, Leah Schreiber to star in Netflix's murder mystery series, The Perfect Couple. Cool. Moses Ingram joins, joins Tilda Swinton in the end. Uh, I do like Moses Ingram. Now, a lot of people got on her and attacked her for Obi-Wan because she was the uh, Inquisitor that was, <clears throat> well, a lot of people didn't like. But she was good in... in uh, what was that uh, with Annie Taylor Joy? The Queen's Gambit. She was good in that. So she she can act. Uh, Mason Gooding. Okay, cool. Pools, Aftermath, Y2K, a comedy. Uh, he was in uh, Scream, and uh, he I, he won my respect in Scream Six. He was kind of like the jock in Scream Five, so I didn't really latch on to him as much as I did in number six. Glass Man. I don't know what the heck Glass Man is. Is that a fashion magazine or something? Hannah Montana, 17 years ago. Florence Pugh reveals that Cooking with Flow project is on the way. It's definitely in the works and it's happening. Cooking with... Oh, Florence Pugh is getting really busy. New trailer for Love and Death. Elizabeth Olsen. Rachel Zegler. Hunger Games, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes is later this year. Snow White is next year. Yeah. The, uh, Shazam! Fury of the Gods is going to be a bump in the road for a, a lot of those actors. And it sucks. Because <clears throat> she's a good actor. She really is. And so is the girl, uh, Caroline Grace Curry, who played uh, Mary. She, she's also really good. Zachary Levi, he'll be okay. Outlander, season, final season, right? S season seven, is that the last season? Or is, I heard it was going to be broken up into two parts or something. I don't know. Uh, all right, guys. <clears throat> That's pretty much it for me today. I got to get out of here and go to see uh, John Wick. Yeah, I'm going to go see John Wick, guys, in just a few minutes. Uh, and then maybe uh, later on today, like around 4 p.m. Eastern, uh, when I come back, I'll log on and we'll do like a a re my a formal review. Uh, Bifer says I'm not a fan of Rachel Ziegler. Well, I think it depends on who she's working with if it can be pulled out of her. 
right? Like if the if the quality of work can be pulled out of her. Um, so yeah, I would maybe uh, she's still on that undecided list for most people uh, that she doesn't carry the weight, but she just she needs more exposure, and if she, well. If she, you can't endure too many things like what happened with Shazam Fury of the Gods he, as an actor trying to start out. You can't endure many of those. Uh, so, yeah. All right, guys. The only other big news that I wanted to bring to people's attention was that I'm a big, big Rec fan. Uh, this is a music recommendation. Uh, if you don't know this band, Big Rec, it's my favorite rock band right now. Uh, they've been doing a series called 7.1 and 7.3. 7.3 just dropped this morning. Uh, and apparently, if you get the limited edition CD, you get a bonus track, which I'm going to have to hunt down. I'm going to go to a music store this, today to see if I can find this CD with the bonus track. But I listened to it this morning. My favorite song on this is called Haunted. Uh, Haunted. So, uh, great track. Start off with that one. Start off with that one. Because um, the first two songs, I think the first two songs will grow on me as I listen to them more. Uh, they started off with Melody and Sound as their single, which I don't know why they did, because Haunted is a masterpiece. Uh, it's a masterpiece, and it it's on par with songs like uh, Rye Bread, Spit It Out, and Fear and Coward. Like the house, the house is also great. Uh, 7.1, uh, Bombs Away, Bino is... Like, between those two, I don't know what my favorite song on that album is. So Haunted is my favorite song on 7.3 right now. The House is my favorite song on number two. <clears throat> and as much as I love Bombs Away, which I think is another masterpiece, I'd have to go with Beano as my favorite on the, on 7.1. So there, all the final tracks on the 7 point series are my favorite songs on those albums. There you go. So yeah, Bifer, they still have music stores. <laughs> I know, <laughs> it's weird, but... Uh, I'll, go, I'll stick my head inside and see if they got a copy of it. I, and Lana Del Rey also dropped a new album today, too. Uh, so I'll be listening to that one as well. Um, that's pretty much what's going on here today, guys. I know it's a bit of a shorter <clears throat> news day, and I didn't have much there. But to be honest, guys, when I was looking at the story headlines for today, there wasn't that much. I'm sure that there's going to be some more stuff that drops. But we can always pick that up tomorrow uh, on the Horror Weekly Roundup. And hopefully I'll be feeling a little bit better today, uh, tomorrow, I mean, because I still sound a little bit nasally, but I'm sure that's, that'll, that'll clear up. Uh, all right, guys, I'm out of here. Literally, in the next three minutes, I'm out of here to go see John Wick Chapter 4. <laughs> so uh, pay attention. My straight out of the theater reaction for that will be up on later today. And I may jump online again later on today to do a to do a formal review for John Wick Chapter 4. So there you go, guys. Enjoy your weekend. Um, go see John Wick. And uh, peace from Mirror Domains. Mm -hmm.